Philly! Hello, everybody. Hello, Philadelphia. Hello, Wuhan, China. This is a very <laughs> special edition of the Wolves of Broad Street podcast. Uh, we're no longer at school, but we're uh, also still doing this somewhat remotely. Uh, I've got uh, my co-host, Sam Glavin. And uh, joining him in the den is uh, the producer formerly known as Seamus G. My name is Ryan Conway, joining you from Bryn Mawr, about 30 minutes away from them. Uh, Self-quarantined, having a good time during the coronavirus. Happy St. Patrick's Day to everybody. Uh, We're recording it uh, Tuesday, March uh, 17th. Having some fun, having some laughs. Guys, there's a lot going on in the world right now. What's up? Dude, I mean... There's there's a lot going on in the world right now, but there's not a lot going on in the world right now. This nothing is, in the sports world. Absolutely nothing. Know. Absolutely nothing, and it kind of pisses me off. I mean, I know it's for the good of humankind or whatever. All right, but it piss, yeah, but it's pissing me off that I don't get to watch sports while I don't have any school to go to. I'm not in school. And I can't watch sports. Exactly. Like I, I was okay with the concept of a quarantine when I found out that that was going to be uh, a possibility because I thought, oh, that's great. I can watch the Sixers. I can watch the Flyers. Hell, I'll watch the Philadelphia Union. But now all I have left, now that all those sports have been suspended indefinitely, all I have left right now is uh, the Women's Netball Super League in Australia. And that's compelling television, I'll tell Love you that. Love it. Love but- it. I was, watching, uh, I was watching rugby the other day. I was watching England play Wales. Any good tries? Oh, how was that? It- I don't know what that means, Seamus. <laughs> they all tried. Sorry, they all tried rugby. really hard. They all tried really hard. I, yeah, I that yeah they all tried really. Yeah, they looked. They were beating the shit out of each other. That's what. That's for sure. You did that. Definitely I good did. effort from both sides. Well, you know, not a, not a whole lot going on in the world of Philadelphia sports, but we still got a, a nice and decent podcast here for you today, boys. Sam, I think you were in Clearwater, Florida. Can you give us your reactions? Oh yes. Are we gonna? Am I gonna go on my Phillies rant a bit early today? And Seamus G, cue the beer. And there it is. All right. So, uh, Sam Glavin was in Clearwater, Florida for the very first time. Actually, it was my very first time in Clearwater, Florida. Mm. Yeah, I know that's probably surprising to you two, but I got to see the whole starting lineup. Yeah, it was great. GT, JT Real Muto was leading off. He went yard. It was great. Yes. And then uh, DD Gregorius finally got a hit while I was there. It was awesome. He was like 0 for 28 before I got there. And then he had two hits. It was great. And then um, I saw Bryce Harper um, take two pitches and then one off the toe and then immediately exit the game, and I was pissed. Uh what else happened? Oh, I got to see um, Zach Wheeler absolutely shove against the Twins. It was great. Um, dude, the Twins have an absolute prospect on their hands. And for the life of me, I cannot remember his name. But Seamus G is going to look it up for me right now because he's the Minnesota Twins' top prospect. Um, but he went yard twice, and he made a fantastic play at shortstop. And I was like, this dude is special. Um, but while Seamus G gets that going, I also saw our top prospect – and Spencer Howard on the bump, absolutely deal against the Minnesota Twins as well. It is Royce Lewis. That's right. I knew that. Royce Lewis is the Minnesota Twins um, shortstop prospect. He is uh, he's unreal. He was he hit a dinger off a of Wheeler, but that was the only run he gave up. So I was a little I was a little sketchy, but you know it's spring. Everybody's working off the rust. I've been talking for a, good, a couple yeah. of months, don't they? Well, now they do. I, I, yeah, I've they seen do. A, I've seen a bunch of different um, like facilities in the area in the Philadelphia area are offering like free. Like people can go in there for free and and just work out because of all this stuff. I don't know how I don't know how that works, but they're just going in for free, which is cool. I know Baseball PDS is doing that. That's a local ish. Um, chain but yet the philly oh man dude watching the phillies in clearwater florida oh man it was great oh it was so good they they all looked fantastic everybody looked great everybody looked like opening day for them it was awesome the lineup was clicking i i love the lineup that girardi's got going on right now it's fantastic i think it's an awesome and 
kind of outrageous idea to have JT leading off, but I, I love it. He's been killing it. And uh, DD. What do you want out of somebody who's leading off? Well, he's got to get on base. Yeah. Does Real Muto get on base? Yeah. There you go. Well, I essentially said that. Just, you know. uh, oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. You just Wait, listen. So Sam, you said everybody's in uh, opening day form. Yes. You said? Yes. So by the time the actual opening day rolls around, they should be in mid-season form. So yes, should they should. For a World Series out of this Philly squad? Um, I mean, you should be looking for playoff contention. I'm not going to go ahead and guarantee a World Series that even because there might not be a World Series. <laughs> <laughs> they, they, they won't award it off of who had the best spring training showing. Then the Phillies would win. They had the best record in baseball at the end of spring training. Straight hey, up. I'm banking on it's it. It's a thing. I'm banking on it. No, I'm serious. Let's they ride do. it out. Yeah, I know. Oh, okay. Let's ride it out. Let's 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 wait and see what happens. No, but the the two guys I'm I'm just so excited to have on the on the squad right now are obviously I mean Harper, but Wheeler looks fantastic and I'm so excited for when Spencer Howard gets called up. Um there's a couple different guys, like utility guys that um might be that are like fighting for a roster spot. One of them is Ronald Torres from the Yankees. He's like the little, he's a real short. Like he used to play second base for them. He, he plays all over the place in the infield, and I loved, I loved his at bats. I thought he looked great. He looked great in the field. Um, Neil Walker looks fantastic too. He's a little bit older, but um, yeah, there, there are guys fighting for roster spots. I mean, the Phillies invited seventy guys to freaking training, so which is what they should be doing. They invited a lot of arms, which is great. Uh, I think Sir Anthony Dominguez is done, though. I literally thought it was Sir okay. Anthony Dominguez. Bro. <laughs> this man typed in Sir Anthony like he was dubbed by Queen Elizabeth. Who's to say he wasn't, bro? Can we put you this in a blooper reel, story. please? Because we're we still doing it. Let's just leave it in the pod. This is uncut. <laughs> this, is the uncut. this is the uncut St. Patrick's Day episode. No, he hasn't. I just saw it on that no, headline. No, no, no. Saying, like, on that headline. He's, like, even looking at it right now. Are you serious? That makes no goddamn sense. That's six days ago, NBC Sports Philadelphia is saying that he's doing some light throwing still. He needs Tommy John. Like, his... Sir Anthony... So Sir, it looks like Sir Anthony Dominguez suffered a minor setback in his uh, recovery from his elbow injury. Why he doesn't get Tommy John surgery, I just don't know. Like, I, it makes no goddamn sense to me. Like, I, uh, whatever. I mean, that's really all I got about the Phillies. I, I, I'm super excited about. Like, I was so I was so pumped to be at the the Clearwater Stadium. It looks just like um, Coca Cola Park in Allentown. By the way, it literally. It's I thought that was interesting, but you know. That's all. That's really all I got to say. Other than I'm super excited for July, maybe, maybe <sighs> July. So, yeah, any, anybody got any more Phillies to talk about? I mean, I I'll say something about Sir Anthony. I I guess I guess I can like I mean I fu- actually I don't guess I know I can fully understand why an athlete wouldn't want to go under the knife and get a surgery. Like the same thing happened with Deshaun. Obviously, a different thing. Like for a pitcher, you kind of need your arm. But, like, same kind of thing. He didn't want to get surgery, tried to rehab, and then he ended up having to get surgery. And I think maybe that's going to be the same thing with Sir Anthony. So it's, it's frustrating, but he'll it's have some just, time. He'll have some time to recover. Just, because It's uh, totally we don't know. different. It, it, it's way different than – I mean, I get that you're trying to compare it to Deshaun, but I don't really think you can yeah, compare yeah. it to Deshaun. Because being a pitcher and getting Tommy John, like, is, is necessary. Like, if you screw up your elbow, like, if you screw up your UCL, you need Tommy John. And then you can come back stronger. Like we talked, we've talked about that before. Like, right? You get that, um, you get that muscle from your hamstring, and it gets put right where, where your UCL was damaged, and you're stronger when you yeah. recover. It's like wrong with your leg, pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. No, okay. not at all. All right. So then, never mind. So then, never mind. Sir Anthony Dominguez, what the f- what took you so long? <laughs> Could have told you this was gonna happen, asshole. <laughs> Deshaun, you're still fine, though. I love you, bro. Don't worry about it. Yeah, love you long Last time. season was lost D-Jack. anyway. D-Jack. Jackpot. Yeah. <laughs> love you long time. The, the homie. All right. Oh, so, good Phillies talk. Good Phillies talk. Like, spring training. I mean, your text got me excited. You, uh, I know. Was I was giving you inning, uh, inningly updates. I'm sure you guys were pissed off at me, but, you know, I didn't really care. 
<laughs> not at all. No, I mean, dude, not at all. I was like happy to hear it. I can't watch the games because for some reason that's not broadcasted. I can't tune in to see our top prospects. Like that's a joke. Oh, it's an absolute so joke. I I appreciated having a man a man uh, on site on location hitting us up with the with the first hand knowledge I couldn't get from a TV screen. <laughs> that's so true. Well, yeah. we're not going to be able to watch them until July anyways, so... At least it's not because of blackouts, though. You know, it's just because of the corona. That's true. <laughs> That's true. Because of the COVID. Oh, man, I don't even want to start talking about blackouts. I can't. No, we don't need to talk about go. blackouts. That'll be another rant. That'll be another rant for another day, for another episode. As Try soon, as, as, soon as they on get the on St. TV. Patty's day. <laughs> as soon as they get on TV, we can start ranting about blackouts. Mm, absolutely. So, uh, what do we got next after the Phillies? What are we moving on to? Yeah, you know what? I figure we do a little bit of the uh, OTAs action. Yeah. yeah or maybe, or, or would Seamus G? You know what? I'm gonna let Seamus G pick. Would you rather do OTAs or would you rather do the Philly Five? I would rather do OTAs. Okay, let's easily. do some. Let's do some OTAs. OTAs brought to you by absolutely no one. Give us money. Yeah. Please. Give us some money, please. Me money needing a lot now. Money, please. please. Okay, Mr. Money tax me. Return. <laughs> Shout out Uncle Sam. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> keeping me afloat in these trying financial times. All right, so we got OTAs uh, brought to you by uh, absolutely, absolutely no one. So uh, the first one is uh, coronavirus is really not that bad. And uh, you guys have thoughts on that? I mean, <laughs> am I going to get in trouble if I say what I actually think? or should I No, dude, refrain? this is the whole point of the podcast. Oh, is all right, well, I think, think that it, there's definitely an overreaction. I mean, like, blown out of proportion. Blown way out of proportion. Like, are you kidding me? It's ridiculous. I can't finish out my sophomore year of college? That makes me angry. It makes me angry. Yeah. I got to do online courses? Yeah, it sucks. dude. It, it it certainly does blow. I mean, this is my last semester in college, and it's it got cut short. Yeah, which, at which blows. But at this, I mean, at the same time, looking at what happened in in like Italy, they're on they're shut down. Like that's true. It's, that's it true. seemed unavoidable. Like I, it, it it really upsets me. All my friends uh, were re, were really upset when we found out we had to go home. Like our last like eight weeks of college or so were kind of ripped out from under us, and, not uh, without warning, but seemingly out of nowhere. So that blows. And to, We're like, ah, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, to bring I, a little, really uh, bring a little sports perspective. Uh, let's bring a little sports perspective in the perspective yeah, in it. this because you know this is a uh, sports podcast. I mm-hmm. played. I mean, we played our uh, our final game down in Florida, and we found out that that was our last game, and um, you know. Like, just sucks, man. It just sucks for all those seniors that never got the chance to finish out their senior year of college baseball. None of them are going to be able to. None of them, most of them, aren't going to be able to play again. Um, but the NCAA actually did grant another year of eligibility to all um, NCAA athletes, Division One through three. Really? So yeah. yeah, yeah, they did. So mm-hmm. heck, if I go to grad school, man. I could put graduate the cleats back transfer. on. Graduate, graduate transfer. Graduate transfer. Sam Glavin. He's Let's go. The portal. I have entered the portal. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'll be taking my talents to Vanderbilt University. Yes. <laughs> as as glorified bullpen catcher. Hey, dude. Not a bad gig, bro. Well, well, I, I know. <laughs> <laughs> it's the gig I have right now. <laughs> and shout out Coach Craig Hansen. Sam, why don't you hit us with the next OTA? Word next OTA brought to you by absolutely no one is Howie Roseman is not a good GM. That's ridiculous. What do you mean that's, that's ridiculous? Silly. I don't think that's true. I mean, how do you win a Super Bowl? You know, guy has one good year and all of a sudden he's God. He hasn't been able to figure it out the last three years. I, I, I okay, two seasons. Since we won the Super Bowl. It's been two. Okay. Also, he hasn't been able to figure out the past also, two seasons. There have been GMs that have never won a Super Bowl. There have been tons of GMs. 50, like, 
we didn't win a Super Bowl for what, what was it, 52 years? The amount of Super Bowls that there were, we never had one. We had a lot of GMs. Like, if, if, if you're able to build a roster that wins a Super Bowl, I understand Doug P., Frank Reich, the coaching staff, like, that's huge. But be able to build a roster that's able to compete and win a title is, All right, you can't well, do that if you're a bad GM. Well, then you where is that now? It. Where's that now? Yeah. Well, it's different. It's different than it was then. And I'm not saying that no matter what, Howie Roseman will always be a good GM. I think the loss of Joe Douglas was huge as a personnel guy because Howie is really just a cap wizard. I've never seen him as a personnel talent identifier. All right, so, how about this? Let me, let me meet you halfway here. This yeah. is the season that Howie proves whether or not he's a good GM. I agree. I, I agree. I mean, this is the make-or-break season for me, whether or not, like, we might have to reconsider his time in Philadelphia. Unless, of course, there are catastrophic injuries or clearly the coaching staff is the issue. Like, then I'm going to have to start being like, Howie, what the hell are you doing? But I, 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 that, that's not a, a, a new stance for me. I've, I've felt that way for quite some time. So we'll have, have to see. an offensive coordinator. There okay, neither no do uh, the San Francisco 49ers. And where were they last, uh, last or, the, or this past fam- February? They were in the Come Super Bowl. on, man. You knew he was going to hit you with that stat. You knew that. Yeah, Come dude, on. Yeah, you kind of walked right into the yeah, logic bus right, 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 right there. You're right. Come on. You're right. Check, <laughs> out, check out the new guy, huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll hit you with the next, uh, hit you with the next OTA. Sam Well. It's a little Phillies one for you. Jake Arietta will get 12 wins with a sub 2-2 ERA. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Um uh no. <laughs> no? <laughs> no. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> Cuz he's terrible. Uh, have you, did you watch last season? Yes, I did. And he still got like He's got like a bone spur or something that he's not going to get taken care of for some reason. Yeah, I, I just don't see greatness coming from Jake Arrieta this season or really ever no. again. Oh, but he'll still be in the rotation. Oh yeah, I mean you got to have you got to throw him. In the, we're, pay, we're paying him how much money? Too much. Absolutely too much. <laughs> Way too uh, much. Seamus G, I'm going to put you back behind the glass. <laughs> He say not enough? Is that what yeah, he said? Yeah, he did. <laughs> I'm coming pro Arietta. Let's go. <laughs> he's coming out pro Arietta. Okay, he's the one man in Philadelphia. That's yeah, pro the Arietta. one man that's in good. the entire country. Everybody needs one. Everybody needs one ardent supporter. Apparently, apparently. Just like me and Shake Milton. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I hate that guy. <laughs> I know you do. Yeah. <laughs> Guy has one good game and thinks he's God, or everybody else thinks he's I God. I don't know if he, well, I, he could be God. We don't know. Okay, well, relax. <laughs> yeah. Nobody knows. All right, so we're going to move on from OTAs. This is a, a bit of an un- unorthodox Wolves episode, as I'm sure people have already picked up. This is the quarantine episode, so we're going to move on right to the Philly Five, brought to you by uh, the Wuhan Wet Market. Get your <laughs> bat and snake meat, all you can eat, half off. Everything must go. They're having a fire sale, which is very exciting. Uh, so this Philly Five is going to be the top five ways to pass the time while under quarantine. Which one of you guys wants to start off? I think Seamus G is the special guest. I think he should start it off. Absolutely. I'm going to start off with, you got to go with sports video games. It's the movement. It's what Conway's betting on. You got to go with it. That's what, Con- <laughs> that's what Conway's betting on with his... $650 worth of tax returns. Damn right. <laughs> Damn Chelsea right. 20. Been a great game for me. Play ultimate team. It's whatever. It's fun. Uh, it's passing some time. And you know what else does? Choking the chicken. I'm choking the chicken. <laughs> also, we have Netflix. And Netflix is going to be on everybody's list, right? I mean, come on. But, I, get, I get a little more specific than Netflix, but you know, well, you know, I'm gonna get a little well, bit more specific. This is this also isn't my first rodeo. This is your very first rodeo. Oh, so, well, oh. okay, all right. F1 Drive to Survive has been a game changer for me. It is a new sport to enjoy, without actually having to watch it live. It's fun, and all-time best TV show ever, West Wing. 
I said it. It's such a good TV Dude, show. Dude, I couldn't it's get so, into it. I couldn't get so into well it. well written. Aaron Sorkin is a genius. He may be hopped up on whatever he hops himself up on, but that man can write. Next. I got podcasts. Listen to the Wolves of Broad Street podcast. You already are. Keep doing it. It's fun. And then, last but not least, virtual learning. <laughs> no, it's not. But it is what I have to do to pass the time because I can't go to school now. Can't go to St. Joe's. So that's how I'm going to be passing time is listening to an audio recording and following along on a presentation. Ridiculous. Well, that Ridiculous. was a great Philly Six, Seamus Glavin. Um, thank you. <laughs> was it six? I'm no. pretty sure it was six. We got Netflix, sports video games, podcasts, choking the chicken, obviously, and virtual learning. There was something else in there. I there gave, was. I gave two recommendations for Netflix. Oh, all right, maybe that's what Wait. I was thinking of. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. All right. Uh, I'm going to go next just because Seamus G is sitting next to me and he's being a chode. Um, first up, in no particular order, obviously, this is Seamus' first, or- this is Seamus's uh, first uh, rodeo and he doesn't know the rules of the Philly Five. This is in no particular order, obviously. All right. Um, the first thing I'm going to be doing is I'm going to try and learn how to read music. <laughs> something, something new, you know? What a renaissance, man. Yeah, That's kind of fucking know. soft, but cool. Yeah. Um, next on my list is um, Tinder. Gonna love uh, a little bit of swipe in action, you know. Pass the time. Um, <laughs> uh, well, I have to Brilliant. find me a nice lady to Brilliant. quarantine. I'm sorry. With. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We don't see these lists beforehand. We, 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 we don't see yeah, these we don't, lists beforehand. No, we so never I'm do. Bad. That's part of the rules of Philly I'm Five. Bad. This is so funny. It's part of the rules of Philly Five. Um, next is uh, is Netflix, um, but I'm only going to give one recommendation, and I'm going to give that recommendation of Grey's Anatomy. Grey's, Anat- Grey's Anatomy is one of my favorite TV shows to watch. I've, I just watch it all the time. It's great. It's what I do when I'm not watching sports. Uh, my next one is just to make me a little bit more uh, of a well-rounded Philly fan, even though I've seen this plenty of times. Uh, it's watch the 2008 World Series. You know, I think I think everybody should have something like that on their list. Uh, I understand, but I was actually there. Yeah, oh, oh. for game five. How so. old were you? It doesn't matter. Yeah. I was there. Okay. I watched it at like two in the morning with my dad. It was great. Um, and last but not least, uh, reenact Free Willy. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Excellent, Philly Five. Out of both of you, I'm very happy with the results so far. I'll close out the segment. I think I got a pretty decent list. Uh, you can let me know if you disagree. So uh, to open up, I'm going to sit around and watch Travis Konechny highlights and wonder what could have been with this NHL season. The Flyers were getting very good, and uh, you know it was kind of ripped away from us. I was very my Lenten promise. Like I feel like a bad Catholic now. Uh, up next, you know, after that, you know, I'd like to sit down, grease the pole. <laughs> then uh, easily, after that, easily, you. Yeah. You, you, you can uh, do something that's really fun, and you can uh, get a quote for your next home or business project at WidePlankFloorSupply.com. <laughs> I know that's what I'll be doing during the quarantine because they're still working hard. They're still out there. They're still they're, they're, they're still getting it done, despite these difficult Running times. Running and gunning. Yeah, we are. Which I, which I respect. Which I respect. And uh, up next, of course, is Amazon Prime and Sexy Time. You find a nice uh, COVID-free lady to quarantine yourself with and uh, enjoy yourself. And then, uh, you know... Close out the segment. I got to call your grandparents, okay? They love you. They care about you, and they want to hear from you. That's a fact, all right? So, but don't go anywhere near them. Do not. No, seriously, don't. Don't do it. It's not worth the risk. Just not. So, a fun Philly Five. <laughs> Mom, if you're listening, I love you. Yep. That was great. That was one of our better Philly Fives, I would say. I enjoyed that. That was fun. That was fun. Maybe a little bit. It's a little. Only because this is your first time. Oh, okay. You're we we got to haze you. Oh. We got to haze you a little bit. <laughs> well, I'm empty. All right. So we finished up. 
Philly Five brought to you by the Wuhan Wet Market. Bat, snake, panda meat, 50% off. It's, fine. it's an ama- it's amazing deal. Buy one, get one. <laughs> it's a BOGO sale. <clears throat> Love a good BOGO sale. Love one at, uh, you know, in America, nuts. in China. <laughs> we're good to go. So we're moving on. So today's NFL free agency. NFL free agency opened up today, or was it yesterday? Or I, I don't know. It was I Monday. Yeah. It was Monday. It opened up Monday. A lot of moves being made. The Eagles have made a couple interesting moves. So, you know, you look around the team. You see we have needs at cornerback. We have needs at wide receiver. We have needs at the offensive line position. We have needs pretty at the linebacker position. What did Howie Roseman go out and do? He signed a nose tackle because that's what Howie Roseman knows. <laughs> and to be that's honest, I kind of like the move. I mean, it's a, he, I don't, couldn't tell you the name of this guy. I think it's Hargrave, something Hargrave. Yeah. Javon from Hargrave. The, uh, yes, yeah, from the uh, Pittsburgh Steelers. So if you, st- if you sign a guy off the Steelers' defense, I- I'm pretty high on him already. But with him coming in, we lost some notable names. I'm talking we lost Big V, went to the Lions. Malcolm Jenkins, we dropped him. Uh, Jordan Howard went to the Dolphins, which I could not give less of a shit about. Like, whatever. <laughs> and uh, we signed Jalen Mills to a one-year deal to be a safety to replace Malcolm, which uh, is interesting. So what do you guys think of any of these moves, bringing guys in, letting them go? How do you feel? Dude, what a weird day. Weird it, was, day. it was such a weird day. I was listening to the radio all day, and I'm hearing all these breaking news things pop in throughout all the shows and I just couldn't get over some of the moves that were made. I mean, and I couldn't get over that the Phil- uh, the Phillies, that the Eagles <laughs> didn't get in on any of them. I wanted Diggs. I really I wanted either Hopkins or Diggs. Like I wanted Howie to go in all, to go all in. Like we had he said picks. he was, he, he, he was going to shake things up. We have 10 picks. And Bill O'Brien has basically given away DeAndre Hopkins. So I mean, I we could have given him a fourth rounder and Jordan Howard and done with it. We would have had Hopkins. Damn. We really could have. He's making a lot of money, though. He's making a so lot what? of money, which I'd be fine with. I understand why they moved on from, from Nuke. I understand why they moved on from DeHop because he's making a lot of money. Deshaun is going to make a lot. Their left tackle is going to make a lot. And you can find wideouts, but like at a You at, at least got to like get that, something for him. At a price like that in a trade, like, Jordan Howard's better than David Johnson is now. David Johnson had one good year, my senior year of high school, when he Absolutely. tore up the Eagles. And yeah. he hasn't done jack since then. Nothing. And jo- Jordan Howard's done more. We probably could have given him Jordan Howard and a, and, a, and, a, and a what? And a fifth? We could have given him fourth Jordan Howard and a fifth. Yeah. Fourth and a fifth? Yeah. It's not bad. It's not bad at all. I think they might have tossed him a, a second rounder, though, also. They still like that's just not. I would have given him a second rounder. We have like we have a couple. I think I'm gonna give him the lower one. Whatever. It's fine with me. I, I would have just loved to have DeAndre Hopkins on the on the team, like or even Diggs. Like I would have loved to have Diggs on the team. That oh, if we got Diggs. The Bills gave up a bit of a haul for Diggs. I have to say, but yeah, I still would have been fine with it. The guy's a talent. The guy's a talent. Like look, you see him. You see what they did to us when we played them. That 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 deep threat. That's absurd. Having him on one side, Deshaun on the other, JJ in the slot, plus yeah. Goddard and Ertz. Like, you can mix and match with that. That is a beautiful combination, truly. Well, it brings up another point of how we just have no defensive backs. <laughs> it didn't matter who Diggs was going up against. There were nobodies. That's true. Yeah, with J- J- Jalen Mills, we finally found out he should have been a safety because he has no speed. I'm honestly here for it. cannot be a corner covering the X receiver. I'm I like it. it I like the move. I like it a lot. I remember... I told you guys this when you called me during the pre-show meeting, you know, get the notes down. There was a guy on the Eagles subreddit that posted during the Super Bowl year, how do you guys feel about Jalen Mills succeeding Malcolm Jenkins in the starting safety position alongside Rodney McLeod? And everyone, of course, in a couple of years, and everybody ripped him in the comments. And now that's exactly exactly what the Eagles are doing. This is 100% what happened. Maybe it was happening. it could have been Howie. Oh my gosh! Howie's Howie. burner account. Howie burner. He, he he just posts all his crazy ideas on the subreddit, and then he gauges public reaction. Oh my god! <laughs> he 
He's such Honestly, a weenie sometimes, dude. Howie Roseman is a bit of a weenie. He's a weenie. I mean, he, it's I, even in his voice. Like, if you listen, did you listen to like that press conference a while oh, back? Oh, I've listened to him many, uh, many dude, a press conference. He, he sounds like a weenie. The only guy that sounds worse in a press conference is uh, Josh Harris. Oh, I thought you were going to go Gabe Kapler, man. Oh, no, here's the thing. Gabe Kapler's got a decent voice. You know, he's kind of like this. You know, he's, he's a man's <laughs> man. I mean, he sounds like a jack <laughs> for the words he says. He's presenting beautifully. <laughs> oh, yeah. Kapler! <laughs> Kapler! Kapler! <laughs> that son of a b- I want him dead. But, yeah, Josh Harris, he just kind of sounds disinterested and kind of nasally. It sounds like the dude's high out of his mind on something, and I don't support that. I'm not about that at all. I don't. I, I don't like that in an owner. Just kind of being out there is like, yeah, you know, we're just gonna kind of figure it out and see how it goes. And I'm like, Josh, that's not how you run a franchise. Like, but anyway, anyway, right. we're talking we talk Eagles. We're talking how, Eagles. Can we talk about how Howie has just ignored the linebacker position entirely? For too long, I mean, damn it. For too long, the quarterback of the defense. Mm-hmm. Bradham gone. We got Kumu. That's our guy. That's our we one guy have, that no, I can he's gone. Count on. He's gone. Wait, what? We have Camus. Whoa! When did that, that happen today? Yeah, to the Dolphins, man, dude. The Dolphins are low key stacked. Literature. Ridiculous. Dolphins are low key stacked. I can't name a linebacker on our staff. Nathan Jerry. Nathan Gar- J- Jerry. It's Jerry. Jerry. Gary. Whatever. I'm going with Jerry, but at the yeah, same time, I, it could be Gary. I can't I'm, name him. <laughs> <laughs> and this is why you're behind the glass, okay? <laughs> Y'all can't name him either. <laughs> dude, we, yeah, we could name him either, dude. We know how to spell it, but we don't know how to say it. Yeah, whatever. It's an At interesting time in Philly sports. This begs the question, who are we going to draft? I know who well, we're going to draft. I know. Well, yeah, you're gonna say. Uh, I, Ryan knows who we're gonna it. draft. Just, just go ahead and say it. Ryan right. knows we're gonna draft Denzel Mims. Ike reset in the first round, which more vindicated me than anything else. I don't think he's a first round talent, but he'd be, he he could become first round caliber. I want him in the second round. First round, I want a corner. I want a corner in the first round. That's Do what you I want. Have a corner in mind? No. <laughs> Probably a guy from Ohio State. They got a lot of good corners. That's a fact. Apparently, there's a guy from Florida. I think there's a guy from Florida State who's supposed to be pretty dope. Really? Seamus Florida G's State's get, just been so bad, I stopped paying attention to him. Seamus G is going to pull pull it up. Just pull up all the uh, cornerbacks in the, this year's draft. See who we got. But uh, I, I still think that they need to go receiver in the first round because they have to sign. So if they don't sign a cornerback – off the free agent wire or whatever, then they sh- like. It's it's unreal. Like I just don't. Uh, I I won't be able to understand that. Yeah. So we there are a couple of different cornerbacks. We got Jeffrey Okuda from Ohio State. Yes, that's that's what I'm talking about. He'll probably CJ go too high Anderson though. From Florida. Yeah, that's what I was talking Christian about. Fulton from LSU. Yes, he's so Trayvon good. Diggs. We could still get a Diggs. We I would mind still a Diggs. get a Diggs on this t- team from Alabama. He's a senior. He's six one. He's two oh five. Oh, big body six corner. One? Don't mind that. A little short. Uh, dude, they're all short. They're cornerbacks. Yeah, it's kind of yeah. There's not like a six five corner because then they just be a receiver. Yep. Fair enough. And then Jeff Gladney from TCU. AJ Terrell, get me a, get, get, Clemson. Get me out of the Big Twelve. Right? Yeah, get me out of the Big Twelve. I don't trust so, a Big Twelve defender. <laughs> no way. I don't trust a Big Twelve player. Straight up. You don't like Russell Douglas, no man. No Denzel Mims for you, bro. You don't like Denzel Mims. No, I, do. I don't like Denzel 40. Mims. I don't like. I don't like Denzel Mims. Do you finish watching the tape I sent you? Yes, I watched the tape you sent you. He looks slow, and I don't think he's going to be able to go up against he's, big league corners. He runs a four three eight. It's not that slow. It's not fast. It's faster than DeAndre Hopkins, who's my closest pro comp. The physical route running, the hands, the ability to adjust. I don't care how we get him. I just want him. I want him. I want him on this team. I think that's what Carson needs is a guy that can make himself get open. 
That's what we thought JJ was going to be. I don't know. Right, if that's everybody what we needs JJ to relax be. on JJ Ortega Whiteside. Everybody already, needs to I, calm I down. I was never that. Yeah, I was never like I did not heap huge expectations onto him before this. Everyone needs to calm down. He was a second round pick. We were all expecting loads out of him just because we got Miles Sanders in the in the second round as well, and he was fantastic, obviously. So everybody's putting the same expectations on JJ Ortega Whiteside, and it's not realistic. It's not. I think Denzel was a better player than him in college. I think he'll be a better player than him in the pros. I still think JJ can be a good big body receiver, and we need one of those guys in the slot. That being that said, can, you know, catch a pass over the middle and take a hit. That being said, I wouldn't mind trading him away. I think that he could offer like a decent asset. I think we could argue. I think we could. I think the front office could argue that hey, like maybe he didn't have a great rookie year, but I think he's very projectable. That's t- yeah. That's that's an interesting idea. The NFL, the, the NFL is interesting that way. It's like especially when guys get paid, they get paid for what they've done, and then they kind of fall off once they get paid. So JJ didn't have like a great rookie year. Obviously, didn't get a ton of ops at the beginning, and then you know was kind of okay throughout the rest of the season. But like with with a healthier receiving core where he doesn't have to be the number one option, I think that he can actually make some plays. Also, I, I, I don't really feel like we need to trade him away. But if teams are calling, like, or if we can call a team and be like, hey, we'll give you JJ and this pick for some player to move up a little bit to get a guy that we need, I'm not going to say no to that also. You know, you like, know I'm not, I would love but, to see in a midnight green uniform? Who? Mike Evans. I love it. He's going to be with Brady, though. I know. He's going to be with TB12. Uh, but. I would love to see Mike Evans in in a green uniform. That's the kind of guy we need. We need a kind of, we need that kind of, we need a big receiver that can make those 50-50 ball catches like Alshon did that Super Bowl year. I don't know how I mean, they'd be able to do it, but I I just know that I would love to see it happen. Yeah, I, just, I don't think there's a I don't I don't think there's I'm a way we can get it. Just spitballing here, my man. Yeah, I know. I know. I I I would love that. I would I can, love that. I can spitball with the best of them. I just want to say I'm gonna miss Big B. Dude, he Big sucks. I'm gonna miss what are you talking he's, about? He's a utility player. He sucks. Utility Big B player. sucks. He's not a good lineman. Mm. How many times Nick Foles gets sacked in the Super Bowl? Zero. Dude. Okay, so Zero he had a good game allowed. when it counted, right? How was he the rest of the time? He was terrible. He was a good Thirteen and three. Player. Thirteen and three. He was terrible. Thirteen and three. Jason Peters got hurt midway through the season. He comes in, fills in. Is a great is a service. I really don't think he's a good le- lineman. He's I don't a, think he's he was a good a- backup to <laughs> Dillard. <laughs> if I had to go Dillard or Big V right now, I'd go Big V. No, yep. no, no. Dillard's got to prove me wrong. Then what did Dillard? Then what do we draft Dillard for? He's got to prove me wrong, dude. He has to prove me wrong. The ball's in Dillard's court right now. My time was if not as good as everybody season, thinks I'll be he is. Pissed. If he doesn't have a good season, I'll be pissed. I'll be pissed at Howie. I'll be pissed at him, and I'll be pissed at Howie. He'll be fine. Like, he's going to be good. I think I, right, I, have full, I have full faith. He's got a year under his belt. He got the yips out. again. Remember that video that went around? He completely just didn't look at the defensive tackle. <laughs> he went and crushed Wentz. That was bad. Uh, no, I think he's got it all out of his system. He had a year to study under Jason Peters. I think he's going to be good. I think he's going to be good. So you bring up Carson. I'm curious, what do you guys think we're going to see out of Carson this year? Are we going to see a new, angrier Carson ready to take it to the league? All I know is I want to see him in a playoff game, a full playoff game yeah not a yeah. quarter and a half Higher playoff game that's what i ask for from carson this season that's all i ask for yeah i don't think it's gonna happen i don't think no and not not that he's not gonna play a full season i don't think the eagles are gonna make the playoffs this year eight and eight is possible early doors man early we got a lot we got a lot of time left I do not think they're going to make the playoffs right now. Who is better like than us in our division? Else has gotten better. We have not gotten better. Who's gotten better in our division? 
The Giants. The Giants signed like two linebackers and a defensive back. It'd be good. It's the Giants. <laughs> I'm not afraid of the Giants. I'm a little bit afraid of the Giants. Yeah, I'm not afraid. Twice. Am I afraid of Danny Dimes? No. I'm a little bit afraid of him. Danny check down? I don't know. He had a good game against the Eagles that second time around. We just played better. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, he, did he have a good game? Sure. Do we have any, did we have any defensive backs? No. If we don't get any defensive backs, we're not making the playoffs. Then I'll agree with you. If we don't get any defensive backs, then it's over. It's done. Like there's might as, as well not. Now play I have no names in mind, like even from rumors for defensive backs. I haven't heard. I haven't heard anything. I like Chris Harris from the Broncos, but I don't think he's what we need. No. So, what are we, we got, drafting? Three corners. We got nothing. We got ten picks for a reason, man. How he's not giving them away? Well, he's got to have a plan. Draft. We'll see. This is the this this draft and free agency. Is going to be a referendum on his job. If he if if he drafts good corners and they come out and they contribute decently, and we actually have a serviceable defensive backfield for the first time since like Apple. I don't know like the seventies. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding, of course, because the Eagles' defensive backs in the mid two thousands were pretty damn good. I'm joking, yeah, of course, man, but. Yeah, <laughs> But other than that, like uh, I mean, other than those teams, it's it's been quite some time in my you know in my actual life where I'm able to remember things and appreciate them fully that we've actually had solid defensive backs. You know, the other thing that I don't think people realize is that we have to replace the leader of the defense. Yeah. We have no leader on the defense right now. And I don't I don't think Fletcher Cox is ready to take on that role. I don't think Jalen Mills is ready to take on that role. And BG I, baby. I don't think that – I don't know, maybe BG, but I don't think that – and I definitely don't think Rodney McLeod has the voice to be able to be the voice that Malcolm Jenkins had. Um, we have no leader right now, and that's going to show, I think. Even if we do sign a couple cornerbacks that are decent, we don't have a voice mm-hmm. right now on the defense. We don't, have, we don't have that guy who played every single snap for three years straight. We don't have that guy anymore. Mm-hmm. That's true. I feel like Jalen could – could no way emphasis on could not a chance okay, okay not a chance okay not a chance let me give you a scenario all right malcolm jenkins had no problem with telling people with having like an uncomfortable an uncomfortable conversation with somebody who needed to hear it you think jalen mills is going to go up to fletcher cox and say you need to get your head out of your ass i feel like fletcher cox is more likely to do that exactly to jalen I feel like so if Jaylen I had can't. to pick, if, if you could pick one guy on the Eagles defense to be the leader, I understand that you don't, we, obviously not the same as Malcolm. Obviously, like that guy, he was like an all time Eagle, no question. I loved having him here. It's a shame he's gone, but that's football, that's business. Who would you guys pick as your leader of the defense? If you were, say you're Jim Schwartz and there's one guy you're going to pull aside and be like, I need you to really be the guy in the locker room for this defense, if you had to pick one guy. I'm going Brian Graham. I agree. I like BG. I like BG. I think Fletch might he's might quiet. be able to yeah, step into that he, role. He's too quiet, man. I don't think he's going to be able to have that quiet. uncomfortable conversation with somebody saying, like, hey, you need to get together. I don't know if he's too quiet. I think he is. How do you know? Have you ever heard him like have any kind of voice on the field at all, even when he's mic'd up? No, uh, and they don't, don't even mic him up, up anymore. And they don't even mic him up anymore because he doesn't, he doesn't say anything interesting. I don't know about that one. I don't, you don't know about that one. When was the last time you heard Fletcher Cox he, get mic'd up? You can't take the NFL mic'd up. And Not be that, like this, but you know what I'm saying. Not like, I, I, understand, I, I understand what you're saying, but there's a leader in the locker room, and then there's the guy with funny quips on the field. Like, those are two different people. J.J. Watt talking about people getting that. Well, that's different because he's also the leader of the defense because he's the best defensive player. He was the best defensive player in the league at one point. He's like, oh, get some popcorn, some snow caps. Like, that's why these guys get mic'd up because, you know, it's fun, entertaining bits. Not a lot of people tune into the mic'd up to be like, all right, who's like the real guy? Like, who's the guy on this defense? Let's mic him up. It's like, nah, because that guy's probably going to be swearing the most. We can't use his audio. <laughs> I mean, that's you know, fair. Like, it didn't stop Brandon Graham. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, 
What what I think Fletcher Cox is not going to be the vocal leader. He might be a lead by example guy. That's fine. Okay. But you need a vocal leader. Okay, I can take that. I can live with that. We got a we got a lot of time. We got a lot of time to see what happens. We, we do have a lot of time. There's too much time. There's too much time. Way too much time. Oh my goodness. All right, so you guys want to talk Sixers or no? Not <laughs> really. <laughs> Not really. Here's the thing about the Sixers. Here's the thing about the Sixers. I am so f-ing happy the NBA has been suspended <laughs> indefinitely because the Sixers have been putting me through a waking nightmare since October 12th or so. It has been stressful. It has been frustrating. It has been downright abominable at times. Awful. So I'm glad we have this break. However, however, Brett Brown can't get fired now. (laughs) He can't. Is that a good thing? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I really don't know. I, I was like, you know, I'm going to support him. Let's finish the season out, see how far we get in the playoffs, and if it's an embarrassing exit, then you know what? By all means, cut him loose because he won't be do the guy. See, to- do you see any scenario where it's not an embarrassing exit? I mean, like, there's, we don't know. We don't know anymore. We'll have to the see. The answer is no. That's the correct no. answer. Do, do I see a possible embarrassing exit in the future? Yes. Do I think any exit is embarrassing? No. I don't think if you lose in the playoffs, it's necessarily embarrassing. If However, you lose in the first round, well, that's it's going to be embarrassing. Well, that's, that's the first round. And we're going to lose to the Celtics in the ah, first round. Can't lose to the Celtics in the first round if there's no playoffs, Seamus G. You've got to remember that. If there's no playoffs, you can't lose to the Celtics. That's the one. That's another reason I'm happy. I'm actually overjoyed with the fact that the NBA is gone. I was really upset as just a basketball fan. I'm like, this is terrible. There's no more NBA. But then as a Sixers fan, I was like, thank the Lord. I will not have to deal with this anymore. I will not have to put up with this BS. Because it's been well, frustrating. I didn't, it's been frustrating. I didn't need the coronavirus for me to stop watching the Sixers. Trust me, I know, Sam. I know. Okay. <laughs> just, just wanted to make sure that you knew that. He just wanted to hear his voice. That's mm. what he <laughs> Hey, that's the whole reason I started this podcast was so I could hear myself talk. So that's fine. Uh, so, so that's about it on the Sixers. And Shake Milton, MVP. All right, moving on. Yeah, yeah, doghouse? Do the, a little bit of doghouse action. Doghouse? You know? I think, yeah. Uh, yeah. All right. Go ahead. Uh, anybody want to start or should I or whatever? I'll go with the sensible pick. I'm putting Howie in the doghouse. Putting Howie in the doghouse? I'm putting Howie in the doghouse. I can't argue. Look at I the move. Argue. Look, at, look at the moves in free agency. I mean, we haven't had the draft yet, but precedent. Come on, we don't think that he's going to do. I oh, don't. He think never he's drafts do well. well. Never yeah. drafts so, well. I'm putting Howie in the dog doghouse because he set himself up for failure this season, and I think we're going to see an exit. Yeah. Can't argue with you, man. Mm-hmm. It's uh, I I can't argue with that either. He really, it it's been two days of free agency, so I mean we'll see how it how it plays out. It could change, but right now at time of recording, I have to agree a hundred percent. I'm not happy with uh, with the really not with the moves he's made, but with the lack of moves. Uh, I'll go next. I'm gonna put uh, I'm gonna put China in the doghouse. More specifically, the Chinese government. <laughs> Not only because did the coronavirus begin in China, but when China was, when the Chinese government was aware of it, they kept it hush hush and allowed it to spread across the entire f- globe, thus cutting my senior year of college short by two months. So Xi Jinping, the rest of the People's Republic of China, why don't you shove a bat up your ass? All right, f- off. I'm pissed. Word. Uh, similarly, I'm going to put the uh, singular bat that started the uh, coronavirus into the doghouse. Um, yeah, I think, I think that's about it. Go birds. Go birds.
Hashtag Trust birds not bats. Hashtag birds not bats. Get it trending on Twitter. Birds not bats. Hashtag birds, birds not, not bats. bats. Oh man, that's two hashtags for us. Let's go. Let's go. We're oozing orange. We're we're in top of the metro division. <laughs> not yet, but <laughs> we're gonna get there. We're we're going to the Stanley Cup if it happens. Let's go. Fly, flyers, fly. I like that. I'm I'm, I'm happy with that. So I mean, we're, we're talking I mean, flyers. Orange. The Flyers, man. I got nothing on the Flyers, man. I know I mean, it's our Lenten promise, but I don't follow NHL news, so I can't I can't hook you up with any coronavirus Flyers updates. I got nothing. Yeah, um, I'll yeah. I'll do my best. Kevin Hayes has been our best pickup this year. One hundred percent. Kevin Hayes I that. has been a magician on the sheet. All right, he's been fantastic, and I I hope we re-sign him. I think I would might. love to. They have to. I mean, the, du- the dude to. got a beer named after him after like five months in Philly. Not even. So if they clearly, resign him, I'll get his jersey. Word. I'm getting the Carter Hart jersey. Carter Hart. All right. I'm so a goalie man. Kata ka- ka- hot. Kata ka- ka- hot. Ka- ka- hot. Gee, I might have to just order Kevin Hayes right now. Just banking on them signing them back. Bold I, move. I'd wait. You think I? <laughs> you wait. think I should wait? I, I'd wait. You never I'd know. Wait. I know, I'd but wait. Conway's got the TK jersey, and I'm super jealous, man. <laughs> Dude, the TK jersey is officially the freshest jersey I own. Yeah, it is. Are you kidding me? Hockey sweaters are just on another level of sports. So jerseys. fresh. I have a USA Them and I have baseball a, jerseys. Oh, yeah. like, you, you oh, really yeah. can't go. Dude, can we talk about this? A football jersey is terrible to wear. Yeah, it's pretty you bad. You can't wear a football jersey out. You look foolish. You look like an you ass. Do. Like you can, nobody can fill that out. And no. if you can fill it out, spend your time doing something else. <laughs> maybe hit the right. gym. <laughs> Couple agree, sit-ups, man. maybe. I agree. <laughs> and That's then, all I gotta say with and that. then you go to the basketball jersey, it's a it's a tank top. Fresh. If you're not it, it can be it can be fresh, but like you have to either have long sleeve or no nothing. Mm-hmm. Because if you go t shirt under No, just, I definitely like I, a, no, I always like go LeBron. Long. I always go long sleeve. Under. We, I, either I do a sweatshirt under or I just do a straight up long sleeve. Mm. That has to be. It's fresh. That's fresh. It's fresh. Mm. I got a yes. fun actually. I'm coming out not pro. <laughs> basketball jersey. What would you rather wear? A basketball jersey or an NFL jersey? Easily basketball. Yeah. Yeah. Easily yeah. basketball right. jersey. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The theme of this is that it's NFL jerseys funny, are terrible to wear. A brief, fun tidbit about uh, the Philly, about Phillies jerseys: one, everybody loves my powder blue Scott Kingery jersey at school. They're like, "That's oh, fresh." I mean, who wouldn't? Oh, You'd be on. a psycho not to. I think I want to get the uh, the retro all maroon jersey. Ooh, those are nice. Those Saturday are night specials. Uh, yes, I'm loving my cream. Harper. Yeah, jersey. your cream Harper jersey's dope. That I was off white, John. Yeah. I was gonna get that. And then you yeah, just yeah. like send a snap of you in it, and I was like, "That's sick for you," but I'm a little pissed. <laughs> like, yeah, I know. I was a I little, je- uh, little jealous. My go-to, my go-to Phillies jersey right now is just the regular, the pinstripe, the red pinstripe Hoskins jersey. Ooh, nice, that's nice. My my buddy from Minnesota actually bought a Phillies hat because he's just like the Phillies just have like s- sick gear. I just like it. Your design team is so good. Magnificent. You know what we didn't talk about? What? The new Philly Fanatic. Oh, we got to talk about uh, Can we talk about the new Philly Fanatic? Oh, yeah. <laughs> what the I don't know hell why everybody's that? so angry. I don't, know, angry. I, I don't know why you're so angry. I'm angry. He too. looks no different. He looks different. It, it looks doesn't. stupid. You know what? It looks different. Mm-hmm. What do you have? A short you nose? added no. He added like a little like eyebrow thing, and he's got like a little blue tail. That's it. Why has he got a blue That's tail? It. Why has he got a blue tail? Never had a blue tail before. Because they had to change it so that they didn't get sued for the rights. I'd rather have this Philly Fanatic than no Philly Fanatic at all. I agree with that. Case closed. All right. Here's the real question, though. Hip-hop yeah. or Franklin? Hip-hop or Franklin? Oh. That's like choosing between coronavirus and Spanish flu. <laughs> And on that note, make sure you follow us on Instagram, Twitter, all that good stuff. Subscribe to us on rate YouTube. Go ahead and rate that podcast one time. I'm, ta- I'm talking to you, D. Mitch, and you, Alex Ciardi. Uh, go ahead and rate that podcast for us. Go right ahead. Uh, anything else, boys? James G? It was great to join you, boys. Yeah, this is like, this was fun having a it's little uh, you, 
three on three. Let's do it. Let's do this some more. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. Seamus G, close us down.